When I first heard that 153 traders validated the shameful Prespas agreement, I got very, very angry and I wanted to make a video about this as soon as possible. Then I thought, what's the point? Nothing's gonna change anyway. But isn't this what happens to every single one of us? Maybe some complained to their family about this and Many even protested in Syntagma Square. Once home, we sit in front of the TV until our enthusiasm fades away. The controlled press knows how to do its job well. Then a week passes and we forget about it. The same way we forgot about Cyprus. We're busy, we have so many problems to think about. We think it doesn't affect us. But ignoring a problem just makes it bigger and one day it will affect us. Just look at Thrace, Macedonia, Cyprus, Epirus, the islands in the Aegean, all of these very critical regions of Greece. I say that we have to wake up. We don't have an endless amount of time to repeat our mistakes over and over again. We have to finally open our eyes and use our own brains to think and act rightly. First of all, why was this name chosen? It is obvious that this solution is unwanted at least by the Greek people. No referendum was held in Greece because the negative result was certain. Millions of Greeks protested against it. Isn't it strange that the Greek politicians do not care about being re-elected? No, it's not, because they were placed there for a reason and their role is finished. It's not a coincidence that Vardarska is entering the EU and NATO, and once this happens, it will be devoured from within. The economy will soon stagnate. No other EU member state has such a high unemployment rate, and richer EU countries will definitely grab the opportunity that the open borders offer for cheap labor force. Local businesses will be bought up or close because they will not be able to compete with the richer European ones that will flood the country. Also, joining NATO will officially transform the country into an American puppet because Americans will place military bases and missiles there just like they have already done with most NATO members. On the day that Vardarska and Greece signed the agreement on the name change, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg was first out of the blocks with his congratulations. I wonder why. This reminds me of the case in Cyprus. And then you have Kissinger encouraging Turkey to invade Cyprus. NATO should have suspended Turkey from the NATO organization, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, when it invaded Cyprus. It was in violation, of course, at that time, and yet they've done nothing. And he was actively trying to get Germany to send arms to Turkey. Unbelievable at that time. We weren't setting it up for Greece or for Cyprus. It is in the national interest of the United States to do this. It is in the national interest of the United States to do this. We should realize that Vardarskans are not a real threat to Greece because from a military and economic standpoint they are way weaker. The fact that such a dangerous agreement was validated makes it obvious that big foreign powers and personal interests are involved and they couldn't care less about Greece and Vardarska that are just pieces of the puzzle. The accord was presented as a solution to the name dispute but in reality it worsens problems a lot more serious than this one. Let let alone the risk and humiliation. It is known that George Soros and USAID openly financed and promoted Vardarska's name change. For the last 25 years, at the center of the talks between the two countries was a Jewish-American man named Matthew Nimitz, who has worked officially as a director of Soros-owned Central European University since 2011. He insisted that the use of the word Macedonia is a prerequisite and suggested names like like North Macedonia, Northern Macedonia and Upper Macedonia. Do you notice a pattern here or is it just me? By this logic, the existence of a South Macedonia, Southern Macedonia and Lower Macedonia is implied and it's clear that this has two main consequences. 
First, it destabilizes the entire region of the Greek peninsula and the Balkans, making it easier for foreign powers to exercise their influence there, and secondly, it leaves the door open for a much larger project, the unification of Fardarska and Macedonia. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the foreign media rushed to recognize a pseudo-Macedonian ethnic minority that speaks a pseudo-Macedonian language and has a pseudo-Macedonian culture. My god, what else am I going to hear? Unearthing minorities everywhere is a well-known practice to raise non-existent issues out of thin air. Finally, it's no secret that the creation of a fake state could also serve economic interests. From a geo-economic point of view, there is no better sea route than Greece, with its ports being the nearest European continental ports to the Suez Canal. Over the last years, the Chinese have invested billions of dollars for the famous One Belt One Road project, also known as the New Silk Road, and for this reason they bought the port of Piraeus, one of the largest and busiest seaports in the Mediterranean Sea and Europe, at a rock-bottom price. Note that the Germans have bought the ports of the Saloniki. Apart from this, there is an alternative sea route that is crucial for some European countries and China. They are interested in the construction of an economic corridor, namely a navigable waterway that connects the Danube River with the Aegean Sea by connecting the Danube with the Axios River. As you can clearly see, the Macedonian region of Greece and Vardarska are key regions for this project. All of the above give you an idea for the reason why foreign states were in such a hurry to solve the so-called Macedonian problem, hiding behind humanitarian and other distracting and hypocritical motives. The Prespas Agreement was not based on reality, nor does it respect the thousand-year-old Greek history. Otherwise, they would not recognize the mosaic of different ethnicities that live in Vardarska as Macedonians, nor their Bulgarian dialect as Macedonian. This is a absurd to anyone with basic history knowledge. We Greeks reject the Prespas Agreement and we will never ever accept to sell our country, our country. We Greeks will never give up on our cultural heritage, history and nation. And even if we are not successful, we will at least have the only end that is proper for a Greek.